Hey, Nick. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> really? That's yes. That's where the interesting walking. You don't usually walk like that with ticks and... Oh, stuff. this is just me doing dungeon crawling. Oh, cyber dungeon crawling. Yep, this is Conglomerate 451. I would say this is basically XCOM if it was a dungeon crawler and instead of fighting aliens, you fight, like, cyberpunk. Yeah. And I love... Like, I haven't really played the modern XCOM. I played a little bit of the old school stuff from, like, I guess 20 years ago or something. Well, the modern ago. ones are bay. They're bay. Um, we tried to run this uh, on, like, medium settings or so, but the loading was kind of horrendous because the CPU couldn't handle it. Yeah. When you're running a game that came out this year, sometimes it doesn't run well on a laptop. Oh, it came out this year? Yeah, I think nice. it came out the start of the year. Um, I, I kind of, I felt it, you know, sometimes you have that feeling when you're playing a game, like, you know something's off, but you haven't, you can't quite articulate it. Well, when I saw this on the character models, I was like, oh, they're okay, but they're not as cool as, like, the backgrounds. That's what I felt, like, even though we were running on, like, slightly lower settings, and I saw pictures of what the game should look like on a, on a, like a, if you had the settings way high, which we couldn't do this week because of the CPU were easy. But I feel like they spent so much attention to the backgrounds, which I find are kind of central and it's cool that they switch them up a lot. Like if you go inside, it's a way huge difference in the interior versus like the exterior. The, yeah, like the grimy, like streets, wet streets where it's raining. And then like the very like elaborate the uh, hallways and I well, like, there's a metal, like, a like a industrial toilet, like, bathroom stalls, and then it goes to, like, furnished, like, high-class, you know, yeah. rich I interior. Yeah, and I think that that's a very good theme of, like, cyberpunk, where you have, you mm -hmm. know, the low class being, like, in these slummy streets, and then you have the upper crust uh, having yeah. all this fa But the funny shit. part is, like, I understand why the background should look better than the characters, <laughs> Because, like, you don't want to have everything look, like, so sleek that, like, the characters blend in the background. But at the same time, I feel like when they made the characters for this game, they look only okay. And the backgrounds look, um, you know, amazing. Like, a hundred times better. So that's my main criticism, at least with the graphics. Um, I thought it was early access. I could be wrong. But uh, this was another game, kind of like Spongebob, that was, like, 20 or 30 dollars. Um, I feel like for 20 bucks right now, like, it's okay, the missions are okay, the voice acting, uh, the writing's okay, um, but, and the, the sound effects, like, I found the, the robot that speaks to you is a little bit annoying after a while. Um, I didn't yeah. think so. And, uh, the, the missions are okay, but there's, you have to, like, love, like, the walk around, there, there's a lot of walk around, and you could sort of get stuck a little bit but I mean so long as you uh so long as you keep scanning and the yeah. robot and the robot does assist you. If it wasn't for her we wouldn't have found a I, I think it's really cool there's a dungeon crawler set in the future though. Like I don't know if they're gonna release more patches because I, I know it's like came out like I think in March or April so it's still a pretty new game. They can still you know patch grow it out. It. Yeah patch it better. Um I found it's kinda strange that like the it feels like at least, at least on our system for the game that it is i thought the game would you know not be uh so demanding i was surprised by that so my thoughts on this are it's really interesting i think there's a lot more customization with this than mm -hmm. with uh XCOM, yeah yeah where you basically get to create your own characters right out of the game instead of like instead of having like an actual guy that comes out of the blue and then you have to go into a separate menu to customize him. You can even create their own move set too. So mm -hmm. uh, the way combat is is like one of those. It's it's like a I I would compare it to like very very old school dungeon crawling combat. Yeah. Where it's just. Three of you in the back, and then your enemies are in front of you, and then you get to pick like different moves and strategies. So you could make like a all attack based group, and then forget what exactly your attacks actually do. So you have like a, I, I guess you can have a little bit of a taste of like Shin Megami Tensei with that, where 
you, it's all about like figuring out what attacks are good for what enemy. Yeah, what really blew me away was uh, you don't really see it so much during the game because we played for like 70 minutes, which is, you know, usually what we can do with uh, when you have multiple games in one sitting. Um, seeing the mental disorders and the fact that your characters can like have trauma from each uh, battle and like it carries over from mission to mission like it's not just like oh you ended the mission you're going to be full life full health um yeah i thought one, that was really cool and one like, of our characters came out with like like a mental disorder like she had a back problems she had thoracic um like disorder. i always say mental disorder and then it's no, like oh, it's no. a back problem That's what it, yeah i thought it was a i thought it was like thorax but uh no it, it's actually the, like a spinal damage, which is kind of weird because like they're attacking from the front, so like you'd have to get hit pretty I, it hard would be, to yeah, like I, damage I, your back. Yeah, I, from a frontal assault. I think that I think that that was the point. Yeah, but I thought that was really cool that you know, consistent damage and potential perma death because she almost died. Like we didn't heal her because I don't think we had a way of healing that. Yeah, character. and then there's like. Her instinct is to survive, and then suddenly, like she got it's, like it's, half her health it's back. It's that bit where I, uh, it's that bit where it's it kind of it's kind of like darkest dungeon where yeah you have that moment where the character is like yeah you don't know if they're gonna like just collapse on you and suddenly you could potentially lose the battle. I yeah. thought that was the coolest thing, like the coolest twist they added to this game. But you would never, well, it'd be very hard to see unless you like you read like all the bullet points on the Steam page, so that's kind of, you know, I feel like that should be advertised more, like, you could permanently lose, like, your favorite character, or, overall, like, I thought this was good, I think it has some great ideas, I just feel like it didn't, like, totally mesh, but if you won, like, a dungeon crawler since the last one we played, that was, like, uh, kind of like the game 13, where it's, like, hand-drawn style, I don't remember what it's called, but, uh, I give it a 9. Yeah, I can give it a 9, but I can see why you give it a 9, because there's not a lot of dungeon crawlers on Steam right now, but, uh, you know, definitely check it out if you want something that's a little bit different from, uh, you know, the medieval dungeon crawlers you can find on Steam. What do you give it? I'm thinking, like, a 7.5. I, uh, I liked it. I liked the concept, but uh, I just feel like it still feels like early access. It's not fully finished. Uh, it's, they still need to add a few more patches to it. So until then, I'm gonna go find the synthetic drugs inside this game. All right. All right. Keep on gaming. I give it a nine.